and we are starting what's going on with everybody it is your boy eric aka young god coming to you live in the green dungeon giving it to your real raw rugged and i have a, a very special guest on the other line i will let him introduce himself who do we have today what's going on man i'm rob apollo r-o-b apollo hey man how you doing today I'm good, man. I'm chilling. I'm on some chill vibes. I ate the second half of my pot belly sandwich from yesterday. Hey, man. Food has not been doing me good. We were just talking about how I had to push this back last week because I was I was constipated. It was very bad. I've never... I don't know if I've ever been constipated ever in my life. But this That's was, crazy. Man. I, I was like, this is how... I was like, I know we're not supposed to like Elvis because he was like racist or whatever, but... If this is what Elvis was feeling before he died, I was like, I feel for her, man. This is not fun. Man, Dude, I, that's crazy. I was in a gastrointestinal war for like eight years of my life, but then I got on a med. So now I'm all good. Every well, day I'll be chilling. Well, I I didn't think we were going to start this conversation off like this. But I, uh, I, uh, I boo-boo a lot. That's that's the thing with me. Uh, for people, that know me in, people who know me in real life, I can't go out and eat because as soon as I'm done eating, I usually have to go right then. So um, that's usually my problem. Being constipated, that's not, I'm the opposite. I can't keep it in. So, uh, oh, yeah, that was that was pretty wild. Well, what was your problems? You were going too much, couldn't go? No, the opposite, bro. <clears throat> I was a real nut shitter, and I have stomach ache constantly, but I found out it was like a big, like a stomach acid problem. So now I take an acid reducer every day, and it's like pretty, oh, and I just drink enough coffee and eat enough fiber. Who knew? John, you, should, you should definitely make a bar about that. I, I'm anti shit bar, <laughs> but see when usually people do that, it's like a very just generic general bar. They're never talking about their own actual like, you know, intestines. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's get into this real. Y'all be talking about the real shit. Let's get into the real shit. You know what I'm, I'm saying? Just, I'm dropping real vulnerable shit bar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Man. this. Let me get into this real shit. This is for my niggas who can't boo boo. I know y'all feel this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You were, you were way too ready for that. <laughs> What's your life like? You ever had to pop a pill to shit? You ever had to... No, I'm not going to go. I'm not... They ain't going to get my bag. I'm going to start cooking right now. <laughs> this is so funny. Um, I want to talk about... I want to start this off by saying why I just found out probably about an hour ago why I think I like your music. It's because your music reminds me of the music that me and my friend Nate used to make. And really? we we haven't made music in a bar. He still makes music. I just don't make music anymore. But we used to make music. And I wouldn't say, like, you're a parody artist. You're not Weird Al. But it's mm-hmm. fun music. It's funny. Mm-hmm. It's laced with bars as well, though. So it's like, don't get twisted. This might be a funny song, but it's some bars in here, you know? And, um... Yeah. Uh, shout out to Nate. I don't know if you know who that is. His uh, his his like you would. If anybody know him, you know my Nate number eight. Yeah, um, on Twitter. Yeah. So it's like, oh yeah, the, so, yeah. that nigga is. Yeah, his he's fire. He's funny, but he getting bars off as well. That's my point. Another another person from Jacksonville. We were talking about off camera. Uh, oh shit. So yes, yeah, so me and Nate. Um, since like ninth grade, that's like when we start. That's when we met. And we just started yeah. making a bunch of music. Shout out to. I think the first song we ever made was um called Aunties and Grandmas. And like I said, it's just very fun stuff. We have a... Uh-huh. This is so stupid. I feel like I've pulled this out so many times recently. But like, it's my first ever mixtape. Shout out to me and Nate. Freaking big girl mixtape. Made a mix about big crazy. girls. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. 10th <laughs> grade stuff right there. Um, I say that to say, we are making very fun music. And I feel like a lot of people... I don't know. I don't feel fun in their music anymore. Like, the, 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 mm. the aspect of fun. Like, that's why I kind of was liking... When the Philly niggas was dancing and stuff, I was like, "What do you think is having mm-hmm. fun? Like, this is really fun music." I feel like you're having fun, and I just want to say shout to you for bringing that back because I, I love the aspect of people having like fun in their music. Thank you, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel like the way that you described it is pretty accurate, right? Like, I I don't go out the way and describe my music as like funny or like meme rap because it's not like I feel like there's a lot of people, especially like white rappers. Who are using rap as a medium to be funny yeah right the rap is at first it's like oh i want to be funny and i'm being funny through rap which i guess is fine i don't really care for it but whatever um but i'm like i've been rapping for like 11 years and like my whole life is like informed by like love of hip-hop 
Um, and it's more so, like you're saying, like a carefreeness and a willingness to embrace like the silly and fun and chaos of like my own personality that my friends will attest. My music is pretty representational of, of how I, I am. Um, and that like I can do that fun stuff, but like I can take making the fun music seriously. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, I'm still obviously, like you said, like it's still like hard. Like the sound palette is still like hard. It's not like all the way dumb mode. And like, I'm always trying to get bored though, like at the end of the day, because I'm from Detroit, you know? I'm in Metro Detroit right now. I'm right outside the city, but I grew up in Detroit and it's like very bar focused Detroit like music. And so it's like, that's the baseline. Like, you at the very least have to be getting bars off. And I just feel like I carry that with me. So, yeah, I'm trying to make stuff that's, like, uh, I mean, especially under the Rob Apollo name, like, I'm doing a lot of, like, stuff that's, like, you know, just, like, fun and chaos and, like, testing boundaries and, like, you know, pro progressive, I guess, like, you could say, like, contemporary, right? Like, my life is heavily informed by, like, like I'm, a, I'm very, like, an artsy nigga. I was in art school, bro. It's, like, I'm, like, in queer spaces all the time. Like, my partner is queer. Like, a lot of my friends are queer. So it's, like... My life is very like progressive, but also I'm a nigga from Detroit, so it's like I'm trying to I'm trying to bring all these things into like a unique <laughs> world that nobody else is making. No, I feel like you can hear that. Like some of the references that you would have is like, oh, this is a nigga that's like, uh, this is a progressive nigga right here. Or this is a bar like that, but then the next bar would be like, oh, but this is still a nigga. You know what I'm saying? So I do think that's an interesting balance because I feel like most people are kind of just either eh or eh. It's nobody yeah. actually like bringing those two worlds and meeting them in the middle. So I do recognize that when you do that in your songs. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. uh, like even some of the people that you know about, I'm like, okay, this ain't just like a nigga sitting in a trap all day because a nigga wouldn't even know who this is. Like, what was the yeah. bar about? What did you say? You said uh, you used to be him, like Hunter Schaefer. Uh, oh, yeah. That's a hard uh, bar. You know Hunter, what I'm saying? You're, you're, you're Hunter Schaefer. You're no longer him. Yeah, you're no longer him. That's what it was. <laughs> that's fire, you know? Um, so, I, yeah, I think you I think you have, like, super-duper unique bars. And I think, I think I told you the first time I ever heard of you was a Trump song. And mm -hmm. I found that so – I was going to talk about that in my live stream. We just haven't went live in a very long time. But – I was I put it like literally in my notes like it says live stream there's a link to that on Twitter and I Bro. was like this is great you know what's crazy about that that's my most heavily influenced like Nate number eight song I've ever made because it was just like the Trump freestyle happened right bro I'll tell you exactly what happened so I had this beat from the homie and I was making a song that was not about Trump getting shot it was like just a regular like fun trap song whatever and then I, my the first bar was like I just missed the head like Trump shooter or something and then I was like oh I could just rail these off so then I just wrote like a 16 bar verse like that was just like blank 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 like Trump shooter and then I was like Yo, maybe I should just make this like the whole song, and then I did, and it was like super silly. And I sent it to friends, including Haji, who you know, shout out to Haji, go. Um, and niggas were like, "Yo, this is crazy! Like, you should just drop this or whatever." And so, I first to test the waters, I just put it on Twitter and I stylized it like Nate did because I did like Trump underscore shooter underscore freestyle dot mp three, which is like how he does his shit on Twitter, um, just because I thought it was funny. Um, and then it banged, so now it's out in the world, and it's like one of my biggest songs i guess uh i was on hassan for it which is so silly really which is so ridiculous yeah he covered it on his stream <laughs> i was like why am i on hassan right now because it's good because it's fire that's why i mean like you the way you put that together i was like this is hard and like you said i did realize i just realized that recently like um i think that's low-key what put it in my head it's funny you say that because you stylized it like the dot mp3 thing and i was like yeah. Damn. i was like i wonder if you know who nate is and then i made me think about it and i was like wait I think I like this music because it reminded me of, like, the music that me and Nate was making. So it, it all came together. Have you ever had a conversation with him or anything? No. I wonder if you, if you don't mind. I would love for like to connect y'all to I'm trying to cook up. <laughs> I will definitely call him after this interview. Um, but 100%, yeah, bro. But, yeah, I, um, I think that people like your music for a lot of reasons because, one, there's a trend going on. Maybe you know where it comes from. I don't know where it comes from, but you're, you're I feel like you're, like, one of the people that somebody be like, unfortunately, that's a bar. I don't know where that comes from, but I feel like... I don't I'm, know who started that. I just know... I know it started on TikTok, but, like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm newer to TikTok. Like, my biggest following is on TikTok by a landslide, 
but I only started really, really using TikTok like a, a little over a year ago. Versus like I'm like an 11 year Instagram veteran. Yeah. So it's like shit be pop happening on TikTok from a few years ago. I don't even know about this shit because I wasn't there. You know who the first person I heard somebody say it about? Uh, you ever seen an Asian dude? I think brand name like Eric Repred or something like that. Yeah. The dude yeah. said, I-, "I got so much pussy, I might turn to blissy." Yeah. And I think that was the first time I seen somebody say, "Unfortunately, <laughs> that's a park." Dude, yeah. When his shit blew up on Twitter, that's when I was like, "Bro, I need to be like, dude." I was, I slick was like trying to scheme some ways where I could get like random accounts to just like post clips from my songs because like it's not even that that bar is a bar. That shit is a bar, and the fact that it went viral made sense. But I was like, bro, I got so many bars like that. I was like, I got so many. And it's not him posting it. Like, it's not him being like, here's my new song. By the way, here's this crazy bar. Like, when it's another account being like, oh, this nigga insane. And it doesn't even have, it's not even promotional. That's the shit that blows up. It's funny because, like uh, like you said, when it's not you saying, hey, guys, listen to my mixtape. Because I feel like, I don't know, it's psychology. is like people just like, I'm not, all right, bro. another nigga with a mixtape. But when you got another nigga that got a large following on Twitter. Then another nigga posted. It's like, damn. Okay, everybody, let me let me just give it a listen to see what's going on. That's what's yeah. happening with uh, this girl I went in middle school with, funny enough. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this Asian girl that's been blowing up on Twitter. They're like, mm-hmm. damn, she the Asian scissor. <laughs> so, have you seen that? She's like an Asian girl, and they're like, damn, boy, she the Asian scissor. <laughs> and uh, she's, like, going crazy right now. And, um, I didn't even see that. And, and, and it's funny because I just seen a video of her with Ian. And then that made me think about what you just said about white rappers kind of like um, certain white rappers like using like, I don't know, almost like using their, how do I put this? I'm going to say the person I'm thinking of, Lil Dicky. So I feel like somebody like Lil Dicky is an interesting yeah. person because I remember seeing an interview that he did on The Breakfast Club like years ago where he was mm-hmm. like, I, I want to use rap to like launch my comedy career. Yeah. And I was like, that's kind of crazy. I'm not gonna lie. That's some. That's that's kind of wild. Just come out and say I'm gonna use y'all niggas <laughs> to, to yeah. launch pad. What I got going on over here, and when y'all yeah. niggas done did me good, sign up. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? So that's pretty interesting. So I do think uh, you, listening to your music. I mean, you're black, so I mean that's completely different. But listen to your music, you don't get the sense that like this nigga's just using rap for his own means. Like this nigga rap. This nigga like what he doing or whatever. Versus yeah. somebody like Lil Dicky who said, uh, you know. Oh, I got my, I got my got my fame deuces. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Different. It'd be it'd be a lot of random white rappers I never heard of, or I never heard of until the last year when I've been on TikTok and like people would be reaching out to me and stuff who I've never heard of who got five hundred thousand monthly listeners and their top song is like Cock Muncher <laughs> and it's like the, the fucking <laughs> and the cover art is just like the poop emoji or something. <laughs> And it's just like the like trying it so hard to be funny, and it's like the worst mix ever. And it's got like twenty five kajillion streams. Uh, and I'm, you know, but the, you know what it is, bro. I was talking to the homie about this, and it's like hip hop is bigger than hip hop is about to be to the point. It's already almost there. It's not quite there, but it's about to be there in like five years, where just like happened with like rock music or like what happened with like old pop music or jazz music where it stops being aligned just as a black thing yeah like at first like hip-hop was a black thing and then it was like okay there's white people in this black space and now it's about to be not even like people aren't even going to tie it to its roots anymore because it's gotten so big as a genre right and because of that there's all these white listeners so you got these before you used to be a white rapper you had to get respect from black people because like you know like you're that's the fan base and like that's the industry but now you got a white industry with white rappers with a white fan base they don't need the niggas no more so they're just making garbage and like and then their white fan base feels entitled to have an opinion about hip-hop as a culture and as a genre and they'll be throwing their opinions around like they even are allowed to have them you know what i mean which was is kind of new for me to deal with because even me right like i'm only 25 but when i was like 10 15 that shit was not happening <laughs> it's weird bro no like you said everybody uh they make a good point of they don't need the approval of black people anymore versus like uh versus like eminem couldn't have blown up without black cosigns 
right. regular black fans just thinking, oh, the white boy can rap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you got a black producer. That, you feel me? Or you look at somebody like uh, Paul Wall. Paul Wall, yeah. black people thought, oh, man, he could rap. The black people around him thought, bro, could rap. Like, you yeah. had to have the white cosign. Now you could be a white rapper and you don't got n- not a single nigga in your audience, but you can be successful. Your producer's white, your a and white, your label head is white, all your audience is white, and you got 15 million mothers. <laughs> and you're, you're the man. You, you, making, you making bank. So, I don't know. I've always, well, I would say even more recently, I've been more pro, like, hey, we, we really need to, like, gatekeep certain things about hip-hop because the fact that, like, somebody, like, I don't know, like, Adam-22 can, like, kind of just come in and, like, uh, do what he does. It's like, how is nobody, like, how is this allowed? (laughs) Because I always think like this. I always think somebody like him, if every rapper said, you know what, we're not going on this show no more, then that reduces a lot of the content he can make because he can't interview anybody. If everybody just started to say, hey, we're going to sit that one out. But niggas not going to do that, so, unfortunately. Yeah, bro. It's really crazy. And it's funny, like, what's crazy is, like, me watching all this and seeing all this because it's, like, being black, right? Like, and I'm assuming this is also the case for you. Like, you grow up in, like, hip-hop culture to a larger extent than the average person, right? So our lives are kind of informed of this, especially as, like, young black men, I think. Um, But, like, these white kids who are fans of my music, that is not their experience. So they're not thinking about all these, like, cultural things or like overlaps or contrast that I'm thinking about navigating the industry they just hear my music and they say oh this is funny you're just like so and so wait real quick like, real quick no. I want to quote something I can promise you one thing I ain't grow up how my fans did <laughs> perfect perfect that's a, that's you know that's what you said that, that, that goes right perfectly dude I, I I wrote that bar on a day I was mad <laughs> I had so many crazy ass comments on TikTok where I was like, bro, these white 19 year olds about to piss me off. And I've like, I guess I've, I've like grown to like appreciate it because despite their naivety, they're very well meaning. Like the people who listen to my music really appreciate my music. They really connect with it and they like it. So who am I to like want to pick and choose who likes my music, who supports me, who's coming to my shows, who's buying my merch? At the end of the day, I appreciate the support. But it's strange being supported by people whose, like, life is, like, informed by shit that's totally different from me. I'm like, I know I'm, like, an artsy, like, bi-coded nigga, but y'all gotta understand, I grew up in Detroit, Michigan. Like, (laughs) I'm, I'm I'm not in the trap or from the trap, but it's always adjacent here. And, like, I got homies in that. I got family in that. It's, like, it's it's about as familiar to me as, like, the super, like, PC progressive culture. And I really feel like I stand in between. I understand both. I feel fine in both spaces. But it's like, um, that's not most people's experience. And so in the same way where, like, sometimes, like, a nigga will say something crazy as fuck. Like, like some rapper who's actually really, really hood, you know, will get, like, canceled for having said something totally insane, which is usually an unacceptable thing. Yeah. But as a nigga with my background, I'm like, of course that happened. Like, y'all can't listen to... <laughs> Little, you know, insert whoever, right? Like I'm, I'm, I'm not dropping names or whatever. But this has happened many times, right? Y'all can't support this artist and be like, oh, I love this trap music, and then when they say something crazy as fuck, be like, why would he do that? I, it's like, I, what are you talking about? I have one in my head. Uh, Glorilla just—I don't know if you've seen what happened with Glorilla. Maybe like two months before her album came out, she dropped a mm-hmm. snippet, and she, uh, she has a song called. I forget the name of the song, but I know she was like, uh, she was like, we walk up in a party, something, something, I, I, I we, we finna get it started. Me and my bitch are oh. retarded, and I was like, oh hey, and uh, if people did not like this, she dropped that, and uh, I was like, you know, this girl's from Memphis. I'm pretty sure she don't even know you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, bro. Jacksonville, you just said off camera, it's the tenth largest city, but. It's the less di- it's the most it's the least diverse city you'll ever go to. It is mm-hmm. black American, white American. It ain't really no in between. Like that's the majority. Like my homie, mm-hmm. I remember once told me the first time he met an Indian person was at twenty six years old. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know what's funny about that? You know what's funny about that? So look, so Detroit is like very like black, white, and Arabic. Um, 
like there's there's pockets where there's other communities right like there's like a space in detroit where there's a lot of latino people but for the most part in metro detroit especially if you don't like live over there like it's very black and white and then like a lot of sprinkles of like arabic people right so that's what i was used to when i went to college like i I went to like a really good school this school called washington university in st louis um and it was like 38 percent like east asian Mm. right um and like which is fine but i ain't ain't never been around 40 percent like korean and chinese people before and a lot of them were like foreign students like who were literally just here for school and that was a real like new cultural experience for me Mm. and like i got a lot of like latino homies from cool school like it was cool kicking it with all them because i was like oh y'all a lot like us but like so it wasn't like a a super crazy like cultural difference you know but um that was like my first day. Yeah, I was on campus. Like, oh, this is like a this is like a new world. I'm like, y'all have a whole set of experiences that I, I don't really know shit about. Culture is crazy, bro. Because like, if I told somebody on the north side, the black side of Jacksonville is the north side of Jacksonville, and I'm not trying to insult niggas' intelligence, but it just it really is what it is. If I went to a nigga in a certain part of Jacksonville, it was like, hey, bro, when the last time you said the R word? Mm-hmm. They're not going to know what the hell the R <laughs> word is, bro. They going to be like, like they they legit going to have this the R word. What? Hold on. What R? They going to really think like, and they will not come up with the answer. So yeah. I say that to say, yeah. even so I don't know if you've seen this. Glorilla was with Kaisenat, and he played uh, "Runaway" by. Um, oh yeah, no, she didn't know. That I'm like dog. Yeah. She is a black girl from Memphis, Memphis. the hood of Memphis. If I'm like, let me show y'all some niggas from Jacksonville that don't know what the hell Runaway yeah, is. So it's just, I yeah, think it's bro. one of those things where uh, culture is crazy, bro. It's like it, the, the clashing cultures is wild. I was just with my aunt, and I was explaining to her why a, a certain slur is a slur. But to her, she didn't even think of it as a slur. I feel she like I know thought, what the word is off top. I just want to say that. Maybe she, I'm wrong, she but just, I know. She just thought it was a term to refer to a group of people. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, but as of maybe, I say about like maybe eight years ago, it started to like be clearly a slur. Because I feel like even when I was growing up, bro, like, because I went to school with a bunch of niggas. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so when I was growing up, especially in middle school, niggas was saying, bro crazy shit Everybody. like sometimes i think back and i'm like the shit that niggas were saying at like a middle school lunch table is some of the most horrible shit you ever heard in your life and niggas are just throwing terms around for people and some of them like like i feel like even when we were kids even though it was very common like people knew the f slur yeah what slur but like people were still throwing around whatever but there was other words where people would call each other i didn't even think i was just like this is just what it is and some people never escape from that i'm grateful to like have had the life experience that allowed me to realize oh these things are actually very bad yeah. and hurt we should not do this stuff and i try really hard to like be an advocate for that when I, yeah. i'm more often than more often than other people in the spaces i'm in i'm in spaces where i can like correct people yeah so bro, every time i'm in a barbershop bro <laughs> it's something like they feel it like they they feel my energy when i walk in a barbershop and then a nigga says disney making all the kids gay and that's why the country going to hell and i'm like, ah! <laughs> like why are you doing this to me that's it's ho 11 in the morning. Funny. it's 11 in the morning get your lineup get your lineup and go home it's 11 in the morning why are you so worried about gay people that's so funny. you're not a gay people at 11 you ain't even see a gay nigga today i got a question was the slur that was being said by your auntie, did it, does the slur end with the letter E? Nope. Okay, well, we're not talking no, about the same. Talking about something yeah. No, I was talking about I was talking about, I, I was talking about something else. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, but no, that's crazy. Cause, but, but it's funny because you said it was eight years ago. I'm like, this has to be the same thing. But that's fa- But it's certain things that, like, within, like, uh, certain cultures, you tell them, hey, you can't say that anymore. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. That's another one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. I didn't know that shit was bad. Yeah, dude. Yeah, perfect example. Yeah. I didn't know that was. I didn't know I was supposed to say it to like, like couple couple months ago. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't know. I feel like I feel like before like my lang my care my progressive uh, uh, <clears throat> language usage got to like where it's gotten today. Um, I feel like I was already mentally there on an acceptance level because yeah. my older brother is bi. 
he's like two and a half years older than me and he was very obviously queer like pretty much my entire life yeah um, like even if he wasn't out and so like because we were so close like and our parents were divorced so like we split time with our dad and with our mom but we were always together me and him because we're the ones who are bouncing around and stuff and so like we were very close in like a lot of ways and i feel like from an early age like i just got like used to being like accepting of like somebody like not performing gender the way they're like supposed to right like even if he was like not out and so that was very familiar to me and then when i got to high school the first like group of people where i felt like really accepted like fully and started to like really embrace like being an artist and like wanting to do that with my life is when like i started hanging out with the queer kids in my high school and i was like i wasn't in theater but I did forensics, which is like competitive public speech and acting. And that was a lot of theater kids. So like I was very like adjacent in these spaces. And then like I started, it wasn't even like, like I, like I was already like more accepting of these kids than like the average straight kids were. But in addition, they were like more accepting of like aspects of me that I felt like I never got to explore. Like when I was like growing up, like just like a nigga in middle school and niggas were saying insane stuff every single day. And so I feel like that was, like, the start of, like, me becoming, like, embedded in these spaces. See, the crazy thing is, those people that you were around that was wilding, unlike Mm -hmm. you, they never left left that space. They never went to an art school, or they never went to a school with a bunch of different people. They never went to college. High school, no. You know? The high school they went to was, like, the middle school they went to, and the middle school they went to was, like, elementary school they went to, and it was a bunch of niggas saying the same stuff. So, it's like I said, it's, it's interesting to be around certain people who... Like you said, rightfully so, we get offended by things, but not even realize, like, hey, I don't even think this nigga know you're not supposed to be saying some of the stuff that he's saying. You know what I'm saying? It's just, yeah. it's crazy how, like I said, how cultures clash. It's, uh, yeah, it's wild. I, bro, I also feel like it'd be people who are really well meaning, but don't have the language to say what they really mean. And so, like, like niggas might be liable to say something insane. But actually what they mean behind it is something that's very accepting and progressive. Yeah. I feel like I've also had this experience. Like, I think people who are genuinely, like, hateful, obviously that's a huge problem, right? Like, that needs to be addressed. People need to speak up whenever they can, right? But I feel like a lot of people just kind of, like, need, like, not everybody, but, like, a a chunk of people just need some guidance on kind of, like, the language and terminology and, like, what certain things, like, uh, mean and, like, what stuff is government propaganda you know and like i've seen shit like even like my like parents like who also like just grew up in detroit right like they're relatively progressive when we were growing up but like you know like 2000s progressive you know (laughs) um but i feel like i've seen them over the course of my life like get way better like about stuff where like i can refer to my non-binary friends as they to my parents and they won't say they back but they won't like start a fuss about it and they'll know I'm talking about one person. Yeah. And I'm like, this is this is growth. <laughs> We're getting there. We're chipping out I'm chipping away. No, I, I feel like um first of all, the way you set that up sound like a it's not like a stand up thing where it's like, you know, the the two thousands progressive. <laughs> I don't know if that <laughs> sounded like you're finna do like a, a bit right there. <laughs> <laughs> I did think about going off into a bit, but I was like, let me like it. Yeah, I'm a real bitter. No, I mean, I, I watch too much. Um, It's funny. So, like, I would say I had a very black upbringing. And sometimes it surprises people because I um I speak the way I speak. And I feel like I, I, I've I let, let certain niggas say, what up, boy, sound white? What up, sound white as hell, you know? Even though yeah. I don't sound white. But there's a I think there's a such thing as somebody sounding white. But yeah. like a like a Carlton Banks, that's like a, somebody yeah. like speaking white, you know. But you could speak black and sound articulate and just like a black person, you know. I think we're like we're tweeners. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good way to say it. <laughs> I know exactly what you know. This is what, I know exactly. You what know, you're know I, I I had like a very very black um upbringing, but we were talking about the bit thing. Um, my like some of my biggest influences is white comedy. I loved mm-hmm. white comedy growing up, like, rather if it was, like, Tosh.0 or whatever, you know? And then even to this day, I watch a lot of, like, white-ass comedy. And, like, it's mm-hmm. so funny because it's like, damn, I had this black upbringing, and I'll be around my black friends. Like, I'll never forget. I show my black friends, like, like really black friends, like, this one funny video by this white comedian dude 
When I mean nobody cracked a smile that entire time. And then afterward, it was so awkward. They were just like, yeah, bro, let's put some DC on Fly videos. And I was like, all right, well, I guess we're going to watch DC on Fly then. <laughs> you know, but it'd be like that, you know? But, uh, but like I said, I think, you, I think you understand where I'm coming from. Yeah, dude, a a hundred percent, man. It's like, uh, yeah, I feel like my whole life has been like very split influences, I suppose, um, which I'm grateful for. Like I said, like I do think it makes me, it makes me pretty comfortable in a lot of spaces. Like the vast majority of spaces, I feel pretty comfortable. But it does mean I only feel really, really, really comfortable in like a very specific niche space, mm. right? Like I feel like when I'm with other like black people um or shit to be honest or like any race of person who also share like a very multicultural like upbringing right and like can understand like these like these different things and like maybe even had like a similar educational experience as me but also is like in like artistic and like queer spaces are like the people that like are most of my close friends but that's kind of like a niche spot you know what i mean it's cool because i find it a lot in detroit because detroit's so fucking black that like bro a lot of like the queer spaces in detroit are black the yeah. art spaces in detroit are black right like like a lot of times you go to a city like i used to live in st louis right um and st louis had like a fair amount of like black people too but like on campus it was really like i can hang out with my black friends or i can hang out with my friends in the art school yeah because there was only like 10 of us black kids in art school yeah. and we were friends with each other but if i'm just hanging out with people from my class and it's a class of 65 and there's one other black kid in my class i'm probably hanging out with white people right so it's like i might connect with these people and with this experience i might connect with these people with this experience and when I find somebody who shares those experiences, I really gravitate towards them, but it just is, doesn't happen like a ton, you know? So I feel like I've been putting people on the spot with this, so you're just going to be the next person I put on the spot with this right now. Mm -hmm. um, are you a good freestyler at all? <laughs> no. I'm not, I'm not going to have you freestyle like a whole thing, but I did want to see if you can come up with a queer bar off the top of your head. Off the top of my head off right the now? top of your head, just anything. Oh, bro. I got like a, a, a hundred thousand... <laughs> buy shooter bars just like <laughs> waiting in my head like at any given moment um like uh my shooter off of my shooter off of blue chew think he he bust and then he blew you mm, buy buy blue chew shooter let him blue you there's something there there's something, <laughs> there's something there, there. It, it feels like you're working on a bit right now like you're like you're just pitching uh, ideas you know, I'm always working on a bit <laughs> actually you know I got something for you I got a, I got something for you right, right now right. I got a bars folder all right I do too shout out to the bars folder let's see let's see what you're fucking with from the bars folder all right let's go she fucking with a dog starting to think she a furry I'm beating up the cat. Peter called me in a hurry. No, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. She fucking with a dog. Wait, wait, wait. We'll run the furry bar back again? That was hard. She fucking with a dog starting to think she a furry. I'm beating up the cat. Peter called me in a hurry. Fire. You fucking with that? Fire. <laughs> uh, I like that. Uh, what, what we got in here? Uh... uh only let me hit it once. She got me on the rations. Went to war with Shorty. Now the homie splitting factions. Middle school, I went to Paxson. Went to class for the hoes. All the math was just distraction. That's okay. That's not. He's you work with some birthday. I like it. I got some. Um. Uh, me and twin drunk spending bands at the casino. Bro pour a walk in the tamarind Haritos. I like that. I like that. That's that's very uh, sophisticated drug addict. You know, I like that. I like yeah, that part. you know, it's like you know, it's like you know, we got the you got the hot. You know, it's already dark. Uh, Maybe it's even. even I like it. 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 Uh, she my god freak. We a family. Uncle Fester. Some days I need her. Other days I detest her. Face beat. Big shoes. Shorty pull up. Jester. Chain gold. Rings gold. Fuck the diamond tester. I be out of town. Delta turn me to a sexter. If you saw what that girl sent me, you'd arrest her. If you saw what that girl sent, you would drool out. Bro selling cake, gay club with the tool out. Fire. 
<laughs> you're barring. Hey, stop it right there. We'll stop it right there. You're barring up. You're barring up. I like. Hey, let me give you a round of applause, man. Thank you, you know. Thank you, Funny thank enough, you. when we're off of here, there's a bar that I want to say so bad. But the no, the eyes that I have in my head right now. <laughs> but I just don't know if it's problematic or not. And uh, it's funny. So punch, yeah. I said this to Nate, and mm-hmm. Nate was like, "That might be one of my favorite bars you ever said." <laughs> Dude, I want, yeah, I want to hear. It. You know, it's funny you say that, bro. I got so many like I damn near like when I like so. Okay. So I'm doing a project, like a multi-year project called NSFW. Yeah. I'm working on NSFW 3 right now. The one that had my song that went viral that blew up was NSFW 2. Yeah. NSFW 1 came out like two and a half years ago. Uh, maybe three. I don't know. Anyways, when I was working on NSFW 1, and I, that's when I really started pushing uh, essentially the type of music I'm making now, right? It's like fun, chaotic. The bars are like all over. But I didn't know what I could get away with and what I couldn't get away with yet. So I had to form, like, a group chat coalition. <laughs> I was, like, sending in idea, and I was like, can I say this? I, I could get through about probably 60 70% of the time. But I'd be having a lot of ideas, so I got to make sure. And then, like, you know, go bid it up, Martin. I think that I'm, not, I'm probably not at liberty to, you know. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a let it rip. How about that, man? I'm going to let it okay. rip. I'm going to say it, man. Hey. Okay, if you get, hey, you know what, bro? If I'm witness to the Eric the Young guy canceling, that's an honor. <laughs> I mean, no harm by this. I just, I, I really think this was a good bar. So me and Nate, we were spitballing. We were just saying, like, um, kind of like how, like you said, working on a bit. We're like, man, I'm surprised um, because we we're talking about Rio de Young G. Rio de Young G on the legendary song. He ended off with. Uh, um, like, like yeah. the the like, my girl got a dick or whatever. However, he yeah, worded, I forget. Yeah, so, not I, good. so, 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 so now we're just like, we're spitballing. Like, man, like, I wonder what are bars people have never said. And mm-hmm. we were talking about like, um, bars about choppers and niggas having a, like niggas. Oh, I got the chop. Oh, mm-hmm. I got the chop or whatever. So I was like, I think I got one. <laughs> I said. I actually sympathize with the transgender community. Me and y'all are cool. I had to take a psychological evaluation to get my chop too. <laughs> that's fire. That's kind of good. That's honestly that's pretty fire. I would say is that problematic? I don't know. No, I think that's great. There we go. I think that's great. There we go. Yeah, man. They're gonna clip this and just get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. But no, no I, I, feel, I feel like that's uh, that's like you're ex- you're expressing a, a kinship. Yeah, you know, you're making a bar. You're saying that this is a positive thing to be able to do to be able to transition. I think that's a green. I think that's a green light. The thing is, though, once you start playing with fire like that, I feel like like somebody's always gonna be mad. Yeah, and that's like what I'm like. For example, so. In my sexual history, I'm like a notorious non-binary dater, okay? Like, all of my serious love interests since I was 17, all five are non-binary. Okay. Which is kind of a crazy race, especially since 17, right? Are you it's, going for that, or is that just what it what no, happens to no, be? No, 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 bro. You know what it really is? It's like, so like I was Ekwon before, right? Like, I... I feel like the first time I started really getting accepted yeah. was like when I started hanging around like queer community, queer spaces. And I realized that like the way that I experience gender isn't like in a super strict, like male masculine way. And in addition, like I'm really attracted to like relatively feminine, uh, like feminine appearing people who like also aren't experiencing like gender in a super strict way and aren't experiencing sexuality in a super strict way. It's like something that like I myself also connect with. Like when I be seeing like super, super like straight couple like shit on my timeline, I'd be like, this is crazy. (laughs) It's like, it's so foreign to my experience and also just like not what I want. Right. Um, And so I feel like that what I have found that in like is like, mostly like bisexual girls or people who are non-binary or people who used to be bisexual girls and who now identify as non-binary mm. right 
Like a lot of people from when I was 17, 18, 19 who are she hers are now they them or she days. So regardless, um, a lot of the, a lot of experience with my life. And so I have a bunch of bars about they them pussy. Mm. Right. But the thing is, that became like a meme a few years ago. And so because that's people's palate and they don't know me and I don't blame them. Like niggas don't know who like know my personal life. They think that I'm just getting a bar off about they them pussy like for the meme. Right, and I'm like, bro, if this my saw, real life. If y'all saw what they them pussy was doing to me psychologically, you would never question it. Why? Well, I've, I've heard that some of the, I've heard that some of some top tier. I've heard that's what that's what dude, people have told a, me. Dude, I've lost so much over that. I <laughs> we could spend two more hours on how much I've lost over they them pussy. I'm like, so don't be coming in my comments on TikTok talking about like. Oh, uh, like he's just saying this for that, and like I'm so tired of these men who are doing this. I'm like, y'all don't understand. This couldn't be more my lived experience. <laughs> you, uh, obviously, but, you, you know what it is, and, and it's so funny because we've we've barely talked about music. We talked about everything but music, and we'll get to music after this. But you know what the problem in America is right now? I think this might be. It's funny because I was like. Damn, is this bigger than racism? I was like, this is, I might put this over racism just because <clears throat> this kind of leads to racism. I think the biggest problem in America right now is the education problem in America. And I do mm-hmm. feel like less people would be, like, racist if they were, like, educated. So I do feel like education right now, bro, like, if you look at how Trump ran, Trump, I don't know if this is just Trump being slow himself or if this is Trump just being strategic, but Trump ran on a very anti anti-intelligent type of campaign you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying like he's just saying stuff that ain't even real like he's just making up stuff mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying but, mm-hmm. but his, fan, his fan base like you right you know what i'm saying they feel it. like i watched a video the other day where he was saying <laughs> he said no more it is uh because i guess he's stripping away the department of education he's like no more it is well, no more it is political indoctrination stuff we're getting we're getting our kids away from that we learn about reading writing and math you know what i'm saying no more talking about political stuff in schools his next sentence was the next thing we're going to do is teach our kids to love america i'm like well isn't isn't that what you you just said what <laughs> you know what i'm saying stuff like that or i seen the thing where he was like as as america we're going to officially only acknowledge two two genders which is male and female because that's the gender that you're assigned at birth i'm like they don't assign gender at birth they also, I said, those things, like he says stuff that just don't make sense. But people, yeah. enough people, he won the popular vote in America, bro. That means yeah. more, more than there's more dumb people than smart Smoked people. Her ass. You feel me? She, bro, she, she got stumped out, bro. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So that's an L for Blasians, by the way. <laughs> she you know is a Blasian. I've been calling her Blendy, and she's in Blasian too. I guess, huh? I guess so. She's technically a Blasian. That means Tiger Woods retains his top Blasian spot. <laughs> I would like to say Tiger Woods definitely plop top blazing. Then you got Naomi Osaka in the mix. Yep. Janae yep. Aiko in the mix. Yep. Tori Moi in the mix for niggas like me. You kind of look like that nigga. That's kind of crazy. I could be Tori Moi. <laughs> he said something. I think he said something funny as fuck about being blazing like Tiger. Wait, go back to your point. Go back to your point. No, no. Literally, the point was we were just talking about these people kind of like being rather like harmful and they don't know they're being harmful of harmful people being harmful on purpose regardless yeah. a lot of it is america has an education problem and that's how trump won he just he went yeah. he ran off a very anti uh intelligent campaign because nothing he's saying is really intelligent just anti-intelligence and it worked yeah. so i think that's the, the major problem in america right now yeah bro it, it's honestly like i so i got four little siblings right so like i'm watching them go through school and like real time and like I got a little brother who is in um goes to Catholic school he always went to Catholic school and so like his school experience like they've been literally like trying to teach and train him to be homophobic and transphobic but I know him like he's a very accepting kid he's not that way but they got him so scared that if he's not that way, that God is going to punish him. And he's a kid, bro. Like, even when you're 16, 17, you're growing up, bro, you're a kid. And so it's like me and my older brother, like, trying to make a lot of space where we're, like, really talking to him about, like, how gender and sexuality, like, really actually works. Like, how to intertwine these things and still, like, maintain your faith, right? Like, it's not bad to, like, 
pray or like go or be faithful or, or what have you but it's like you can do this in an accepting way but they're literally like at school like scaring him away from that bro and it's like I don't know it's sad hey that's Catholic school which is like a private school I would assume he goes to uh, mm-hmm. public school finna be the same way with 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 with, with, with Trump kind of like redesigning bro, how people be talking Florida? I already know shit crazy does <laughs> it's funny so you know what's funny bro why are we are not talking about music at all (laughs) my favorite teacher was at the worst high school i went to a medical high school in ninth grade nothing but asian and asian people there There there's nothing but asian people there and that was kind of like my okay so like you said going to college i'm like okay so being around him so it's different or whatnot then i got kicked out of school because i went i was just bsing around and i went to my neighborhood school which was the nigga school and one Real of my, you know, complete 180. But one of my best teachers I've, I've ever had was at that school. I don't know if I should say his name because he was slightly very problematic. But he was a very good history teacher. And he taught mm-hmm. history how I think history should be taught. So it's funny when people be like, bro, you live in Florida. I know you probably had terrible education. And it's like, well, mm-hmm. Jacksonville specifically, we have like four college preparatory high schools where like they're very mm-hmm. rigorous and whatnot. So it's pretty straight. School I went to, right. terrible. School I graduated from, terrible. But that teacher right there, he would break things down in a very like, he, this is how it really is type of thing but he would also say things like I want to tell you guys about my favorite dictators <laughs> he said you know who's my favorite dictator he was a Stalin stan I mean this guy was fucked up about Stalin so he would tell us Stalin stories for days he loved Stalin bro you had the you had the commie the black commie teacher <laughs> White, white guy. Oh, he's white. <laughs> he's a white dude. Uh, he was like, but but still, he was. I mean, he was. He was. I remember one time he was like, if I could run my class like Stalin, I would. And this one kid was like, what does that mean? He was like, so I would say, who got homework? I would I would line y'all up. Whoever got the homework, I will let y'all sit back down. Whoever didn't have homework, you would remain standing. I would get a shotgun and I would shoot all of you in the head <laughs> who didn't turn it. We're, we're in eleventh grade, by the way. When he's saying this, and then I remember one dude, Tim. He was like, "Mr. Evans, that don't even make sense." He was like, "You gotta, you gotta reload eventually. I'm gonna just run." He was like, "Tim, you're fat. <laughs> I'm gonna catch you and shoot you." <laughs> but he That's was insane. he was relatable though. Like the kids liked him because he wasn't yeah. like talking like a teacher. He was just talking like a relatable human and. He's a very amazing teacher. Shout out you know to him. Shout out to him. You know what though? And I'm a I'm gonna be I'm gonna be quick on this because you're right, we haven't talked about music, <laughs> which doesn't which is fine, right? And two, I feel like if I say too much, the government gonna come get me. I already know them niggas watching me. I already know I'm in trouble with the government right now. But I do wish, like, regardless of what my politics are, which anybody who listens to my music knows what my politics are, but like I do wish that in school like people were taught more about like the benefits like like in, in a more objective way about like how different government systems can work right because like when we're school in the u.s it's very much like uh, capitalism is the only thing and uh eh, it's not perfect but it's very good yeah and, and all this other shit was very bad and has always been very bad and any country that's practicing it is bad and the people there are also bad right like i despise that and I really, I really wish that it didn't have to be that way. But obviously, it's going to be that way because we live in fucking America. And in most countries, probably they are going to teach that the government system they're doing is better than the next one. But I don't know. I feel like that holds people back because I feel like a lot of like adulthood is like unlearning these like basic principles that you accept. Okay. Like as a kid, because like as a kid, you want to believe the country you live in is like good and safe and just. You know, and then like the older you get, you say, "Wait, we did what? Where? <laughs> Wait, we did what to who? Wait, we're doing what right now? Wait, we did what to our own citizens? You know what I mean?" And like you're just re- like winding the tape back, like from like not winding the tape back, but like you know what I mean, like like uh, taking the shit out, I mm-hmm. guess. It, it, Hey, you we know. need we need more Mr. Evans out there. Shout out to him. He he was teaching us about the black uh the Black Panther ten point uh pro like the ten point That's crazy. Or whatever. But that but that was in our history book though. That was in our that was like legitimately really? in our history book. That's why I say maybe uh, the maybe the rest of Florida's ass. I don't think Jacksonville has a bad education system, uh depending on what school you go to. But um yeah, we were learning about that type of stuff. I think the same day we talked about like the nation of Islam. We we're talking about a lot of stuff or whatever. So um I, cool. I do appreciate learning about that type of stuff, but but now the kids 
cooked cooked food they are absolutely cooked so rob apollo is going to be their teacher like they're, they're learning about stuff hey, through you now how about that they're learning stuff through your music now you Dude, think about that like i'm joking but seriously it's gonna be young yeah. kids shaping their brain after what they hear you say yeah it's insane i think about it not infrequently i got a discord bro and like a lot of them niggas under 18 that shit is crazy i'm like bro like niggas talking about like their messaging from like history class i'm like what are you talking about right now <laughs> like bro like i'm a grown-ass man like this is but you know it's like you know it's like weird as an artist like it's on top of music right as an artist like like you know like the uh, the artists you listen to when you're a teenager right you hold that music with you for the rest of your life whether you continue to actively listen to it or you just reflect on it right like it's very world shaping for you it's very emotional right like we tie that music with like certain emotions of like growing up and stuff and there's a lot of people who are growing up now and i'm that artist for them yeah and that like makes me feel like i'm carrying a responsibility that i have had had not had to think about before just because i didn't have as many fans before but now just by sheer numbers it's like like what Earl Sweatshirt is to me, I could be for somebody else. And that's insane. <laughs> like, that's insane to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, it's cool. So I'm just going to do my best with it, you know? But it's like, it is strange. It is real strange. It is crazy. Um, boy, oh boy, you, you got my brain all over the place because when you were talking, I listened to you, but I was also coming up with, like, bars. I don't know why you got me wanting to rap right now. Like, I think that's a good sign because... I haven't been wanting to rap at all lately, but for every reason, your music has me in, like, a rap bag, Dude, man. fuck yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, Dude, Eric the Young got mixtape? Hey, bro. Hey, man. Maybe you see me and Rob Apollo hop on a song soon. Who knows? Dude, you know what I'm me saying? Me and Nate got to hit the stoop. Hey, I cannot wait to call. Like, literally, as soon as we end this, I'm calling Nate and being like, I might be back. <laughs> I might be back. Because be what did you say, bro? Uh, Frank Ocean at night, he watch them Frank all go Ocean by. Nights, Fra- uh, uh, wait, wait. We can tell you a nigga broke as hell. He ordered full meals with no bev, no fries, no sauce, and no size. Frank Ocean nights, watch them all, he watch them all go by. My That's shooter love Pride Month. It's prime time to blow guns. That's cr- that, that, that Frank Ocean bar is crazy. Yeah. Crazy. I'm doing my thing. Thank that's you. probably that's probably like top three bars of yours, you know? Because that, like that one a lot. Because that can just go over somebody's head, just you know, not really picking up on the double entendre. Just okay, cool. But that was you. You even the even the nights even you putting that in there. Thank you, you know, no, you're you know? peeping, bro. You're, <laughs> I mean, I, like I say, I, I catch stuck. I be catching bars, and boy, you. Thank like, you what else? I have a bunch of stuff written down from you, bro. Um, you said I'm stingy with the ten Apollo Anthony Fantana. I like the way you, yeah. pr- you pronounce his last name like that because I think you rhymed out with Alabama. Yeah, um, yeah, a little stretch bar. I just, just love that. Um, what else she said? Uh, first she pulled the kitty out, then I dog walked her, fire. Um, <laughs> Tubi, the, the entire Tubi is just crazy. Like like the entire song, like you're just barring up on Tubi. Crazy. You know what's crazy? I got, I, got, I got a story about Tubi. Thank you, by the way. I appreciate yeah? it. So this is how Tubi happened, bro. It's like some real, like, uh, important moment in my career in a way that things just line up and happen. I feel like, you know what, even, like, I feel like the best advice that I've ever seen about, like, being successful in music, like, is, like, more than anything, you, not only do you have to put yourself in position to be successful, but when that opportunity comes, you have to be fully ready to dive all the way into it, oh. right? Because it's only, they're fucking quick. They're fucking very quick. So all you can do is, like, put yourself in position to be lucky. And then as soon as you get lucky, you got to go fucking crazy. Mm. So so check this. So I was, like, I had a couple, like, videos buzz on TikTok, but not my page, right? I had, like, a couple thousand followers. I had, like, a They Them Pussy bar do, like, 100,000 views or something. But, like, nothing crazy. But I'm, like, learning how to use TikTok and shit. Um, Tubi, like, I initially, like, like, I made it. I got the beat from somebody from TikTok. When I had like 2,000 followers, somebody on TikTok DM'd me, um, sent me a pack, and I was like, oh, this beat is hard. I'm going to fuck with this one. Um, I sped it up a little bit. I rapped on it. I was like, okay, I really like this, whatever. It's like a natural pocket for me, like 110 BPM, because that's like the Detroit pocket. Yeah. It's like, okay, whatever. Um, and I was like, okay, I think this is hard. I should just go shoot a freestyle video for it, because back then, like once every couple months, I was shooting iPhone, like freestyle videos, kind of like my favorite color does, where it's just like, 
in the same location, but like different spaces in yeah. it, like super simple type shit. So I had my homie come <laughs> shoot it with me, I posted it, and it went like up on TikTok, like like pretty good, like a couple hundred thou. And then I posted like a clip of it like a day or two later, um, like a shorter clip with just one of the bars. And then that shit like went super up, but that song wasn't supposed to come out for like months. It was like supposed to be an album cut. My homie was gonna rap on it, but and I didn't know at the time because I was new to TikTok. When you have an unreleased go crazy on TikTok, you have to immediately drop it. Like that's just how it works. That's how the rule is. Like you have to drop it ASAP, or at least get a pre save link ASAP. I didn't know this, but I talked to Haji about it, and I was on a family vacation in Dayton, Ohio, when this shit happened. And Haji was like, "You gotta upload that bitch tonight." And I was like, "What are you talking about?" He was like, "Bro, you gotta take advantage of this." Like right now and I had a back and forth with him he fucking convinced me so I'm mixing the shit on Apple headphones in the fucking hotel and like outside of Dayton Ohio or whatever I get this shit up and then um, it ends up at that time becoming by a landslide very quickly becoming like my biggest song mm. and it was the first time that I had a sound that was effective on TikTok because, you know, at first it was like, okay, you just post, like, something from a video on TikTok, you hope the video does well, then yeah. you go to the next thing. But, any, like, if you really use TikTok, you learn that, like, actually, once a video does well, if it's from a song, you take that same part of the song and you make a hundred fucking trillion videos, right? But I, I, Tubi was when I learned that. Um, so that was, like, maybe six to eight, nine months of me into TikTok. So then I did all these videos around the sound and Tubi, and they were uh, successful, and it became like a successful song. And that's kind of how I learned to be consistent with TikTok about like shooting stuff for like four bar sections, engaging with other people, and that laid the groundwork for when my sound blew up. Uh, I don't know how much later, maybe six, six to nine or something months later for Sepaku, the one that like made me viral and everything. I pretty much everything I have now is because of that. I knew how to take advantage of that moment because of Tubi. So I was like, okay, we got to go fucking crazy and do as many videos as possible, like, today, nigga. And that song was already op op out, so, like, that was fine. So um, I was grateful for Tubi for, like, Tubi was, like, my training ground. <laughs> so that when Sepuku blew up or Sepuku blew up, I was like, it's fucking go time. So it's funny, you bring up Sepuku, and I know that's the most popular song that you have. Yeah. And I, I went to I went to Apple Music, and you know it's funny. Literally, like an hour ago, whenever like I was like listening to your music, there's a song climbing up actively because it was not right here. Like it's like climbing up your top songs list on Apple Music, huh. and it's funny. It's Come On, Bruh. So really, it, it was the one, two, three. The fourth song was Gays and Thugs. That was like your fourth, <laughs> your, your fourth most listened song, and your fifth was Come On, Bruh. But now, literally, yeah. like an hour later, it's it's come on, bros number four. So that's oh, uh, that's slowly climbing the charts. It seems like you know for you. Dude, so. people people like that song. Shout out to Haji. That Shout was, to uh, Haji. We made one song before that that we didn't finish. Um, so come on, bro was the first song we really really liked in it together. But like we were homies for like a really long time before we did that, and that's how I like making music, like becoming friends with somebody first and. Um, yeah, I really like that song, bro. He sent it to me with, like, a regular 16-bar open, and I gave him, like, a fucking 48-bar verse, bro. I was like, fuck what you got to say, nigga. I'm about to do some rap. You went crazy. Now, you and you was rapping like you was trying to get signed or something. Oh, no, he was going insane on that song. Thank you, Fire man. song. You, you want to know, know a secret about Aji? Mm. He was on MTV, like, 10 years ago. Did you know that? <laughs> no. But he was on MTV in the audience. But there's a classic. So this is how I know him. He's on this website that I use called KTT. KTT. Yeah. Yeah, I'm him. I'm him. There was a on, on the original KTT. There was a GIF of him that was kind of like a meme on KTT. Because if I'm not mistaken, I want to say J Cole was getting interviewed on MTV, and he was in the audience watching it. And M and J Cole must said something. I don't know what J Cole said. Let me say J Cole said, "I like E Booty." And then his reaction. How'd you say? It? And that became a meme. And that became a meme, just a gift of him going, oh, <laughs> and it was the funniest thing of all time. I, Dude, I, I, I would have to find that. it. He, I'm pretty sure he has it on deck. If you ask him, hey, where's the MTV gift at? He'll know what you're talking about. Dude, 
That's funny as fuck. <laughs> Shout out to Haji. Oh, uh, also Haji's a real friend. Uh, I told you this off camera. Reached out to me for you. You know, having no idea that I already been trying to hit you up. So uh, yeah. shout out to Haji. Shout That's to Haji. funny as fuck. Yeah, he's the goat, man. Shout, shout out, out to him, Haji. man. And, and for y'all who don't know who we talking about, we talking about Haji Gabi Yoda. Haji Gabi Yoda, the number one Greek. Let me spell that because I'm pretty sure it's people are like what? How do you even spell what you're saying right now? That is H A D J I G A I V O T A. G A V I O T A. Did I say that wrong? You swapped the I and the V. You and spelled I'm... the game game Oda. America has a education problem. I told you that. I just told you that. I just told you that. Don't blame me. I'm from Florida. What did you expect? <laughs> That's so funny. Um, but no, yeah, like I said, your the, the EP that you just put out with the Enemy of the State that is super duper fire. Um, a lot of uh, uh, Carlo beats on there. Um, oh, yeah. Gays and Thugs is fire. Uh, of course, Thank Obama. You. That's one of those ones. You know what I'm saying? You would have oh, have sex with literally any Obama except Barack. I thought that was really funny. I like the chuckle you did there. You even, you know what I'm saying? You popped yourself saying that. Just such a. Uh, I'm really fired up to see what you have next because, like, like Thank I said, it's, it's the mixture of the fun and the bars. Because it's like, oh, this guy's having fun, he's saying a little goofy stuff. But dang, this nigga also just kind of barred me to death right here i didn't expect him to do all that you know what i'm saying so yeah. whatever you do please keep bridging those two together because i thank personally you, love it man thank you bro i really appreciate it i really appreciate it no, of course. dude i uh shout out to bro shout out to carlo yeah dude then so for y'all so who the hell is carlo he's like a michigan producer uh he's a pretty big producer he's a he's a big he thinks he's a big deal. He's not as big a deal as he thinks. That's my good homie, though. And actually, I I met him. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be vague here on purpose, but right. there's a, a bigger music artist in the industry who is like he he was like a, a a pretty big artist like five or six years ago. But since then, he's gotten really big as like a songwriter and a producer, like really big behind the scenes guy. And he was trying to sign me to a deal uh, about a year ago. This is before Sepaku blew up. And uh, he was trying to sign me to do a deal. And as part of that, he introduced me with, to Carlo because I was supposed to be working with him and Carlo. But mm. um, I didn't end up signing with him. And now me and him, our relationship is not what it was. Uh, we don't really work together or really talk anymore. But through his introduction to me and Carlo, me and Carlo stay really, really good homies. So that's my dog. And that's, dude, you know what's been really weird? is like, like navigating the industry, right? Because it's like, like, like I said, I'm from Detroit. I lived in St. Louis for four years. I moved back to Detroit three, three and a half years ago um, when I graduated school. And so, like, my experience is, like, mid-sized Midwest cities. There's not a ton of, like, industry here. You know what I mean? Like, the rappers who come out of Detroit are, like, street rappers, yeah. right? So, like, besides that, there's not really, like, there's not a lot of labels, right, or really, like, any, to be honest. Motown is right? very long gone. Very long gone, right? Like, there's not a lot of like people who are like uh, videographers shooting like video stuff, or like there's just the infrastructure you need to be a really successful artist isn't really here. And from that, you get a lot of really good DIY spirit, which in itself generates a real creativity that I think you get in the Midwest that you don't necessarily see in like LA or in some ways like in New York or whatever. But with that being said, like when I went viral, I ended up signing to a distribution label out in uh, LA and the experience of being like a signed artist, like, and like navigating the actual industry and like meeting with like the real label people and like, it's crazy. It's very strange. Um, I remember uh, I had somebody tell me that they brought their artists to Epic Records and um, he was like, they had him like they had the artist get on the table like Bobby Shmurda and perform and um he would just say him like I think LA Reed was like he closed his eyes and started playing like the imaginary guitar he was like he's like stroking it or whatever and I'm just like yeah this does seem kind of weird <laughs> it does seem kind of weird only That's time great. only time I went to LA I thought it was pretty weird I don't know how you liked LA but it just it was just like it just felt fake it just felt like I was like on the set of a movie yeah, there's parts of LA that feel fake as fuck, and then like I feel like if you find like the right people, it can be real cool, especially people who are like from there. Um, but there's like a weirdness that you can run into at any point. 
Mm. Like, one thing I like about Detroit, and it's also a thing that I like about, like, a lot of Brooklyn, um, not everywhere in Brooklyn, but a lot of Brooklyn, is it feels very human. Mm. Like, when you're in the Midwest, you do not ever forget that you're just a human being, like, in this world. It's very grounding. Yeah. Right? Let me put it like that, like, being here and when I go to LA it does not feel grounding mm. at all um, it's like uh, you could get lost in the mirage mm. but ain't no mirage here really like for better and for worse right like in some ways like if I'm here for a really long period because I travel a lot and if I'm here for a really long period of time I start feeling like stagnant and frustrated um, because it doesn't feel like all the things that I want to do I have the ability to get done here but then when I travel, like, I spend some, too much time somewhere else, and I'm like, bro, I got to get home and, like, feel like a person again. And, like, like I'm in, like, a I'm in like a recovery program, and, like, my partner's here. We've been together for a really, really long time. My family's here. So it's, like, things I connect with, like, spiritually being back home, and it's just a slower pace, you know? So it's, like, I go to New York. I go fucking ham. I get hella shit done, and I start feeling fucking crazy. And then I come back home, and I'm like, okay, I'm a human. I, I do think uh, it's like a saying, but it's real. People say like, "No place like it's no place like home," you yeah. know. And it's really no like it, something about home. That's why when people go different places, even if it's like their room, it's like this part of my room feels like home. It's like you need that type of level of um, homeness, homeliness, to make you feel like sane. It's like a level of sanity that you can keep or whatever. So um, I could definitely yeah. see somebody going to like. LA, like if you let's say a nigga lived in Alabama and moved to like LA, nigga probably mm-hmm. loses mind because it's like I don't know, maybe I'm just being like stupid, but like Alabama's like 30, 45 years behind, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah. you go to LA, boy, you're gonna see some junk like nigga, what y'all niggas is y'all ain't wearing fubu no more, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> nigga, just you feel me, nigga, just <laughs> nigga, yeah. like, what's going on? So, um, and the thing about those kind of cities, like a uh, New York or LA, is like. There's no limit to the amount of crazy you can get into. Yeah. In New York, there's always something to do. There's always somewhere to go out. There's always somewhere to get drugs. Like, it's, like, very... Like, you don't have to do that stuff, but if you want to, it's very easy, right? Like, in, in like, chiller Midwest spots, like, unless I was, like, really in the trap and I was trying to, like, you know, do some real hard shit that wouldn't be, like, a good time, like, fucking like smoke crack or shoot up like heroin or something yeah. but like like the party drugs and like the party culture like that's not like here you're only going out on the weekend now going out on the weekend in Detroit is extremely fun and the culture is like there's there's culture around that it's very cool it's very fun there's a lot of cool spots but if it's like mon- Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday for the most part Thursday like you're you're on you're on a chill vibe like that's what you got a chill vibe this is all that you have New York I can fucking go to the club and do ketamine with the strippers on a Monday evening like that's crazy <laughs> I don't want to do that but like if I did I could you know it's everything everywhere at, at once um yeah. I think that's a movie that is definitely a movie <laughs> <laughs> oh speaking of that's also something I want to talk to you before we get out of here uh, I feel like I've heard you say multiple A24 bars um, are you are you a twenty four guy or casually? I'm like I wouldn't call myself what they be saying cinephile. Cinephile, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. That is it's a, it's a little close to something else. <laughs> it's a yeah. little too close I, to something else. I feel else. like niggas gonna pick the better one. Like you know what I mean? Like w- whatever. I wouldn't call myself a cinephile, but I enjoy a movie. And I feel like just by nature of, like, the people I spend time with, like, the movies that I've ended up watching in the last, like, I don't know, five years or so, have been a lot of A24 movies. And I know my fans are watching A24 movies, so they're going to get those references. The funny shit is, like, bro, if I was making a reference to, like, black movies from when I was growing up, none of my fans would understand that at all. Okay, I'll ask you this. What's what's a black reference that you can make that you know you that will leave your fans? Like, what is, what is this guy talking about? Bro, like, if I was... Bro, I bet... What percent of Rob Paul fans have seen New Jack City? See, I don't know your fan base. The way you talk about your fan base, I would say very few. <laughs> I, okay, here's the thing. And, and this is an, an interesting thing. The, I feel like when I before I got a big fan base through TikTok, right, my fan base was actually pretty diverse, right? Like, a lot of, like, 
niggas like me and you, right? And then, like, maybe, like, a good bit of, like, white art school kids. But a lot of people, like, 22 to 30. Yeah. And then when my shit blew up on TikTok to... And, and it blew up my fan base times, you know, 80 or whatever, right? Like, and, bro, when my shit blew up on TikTok, in, like, three weeks, I went from, like, 3,500 or something monthly listeners to 270,000. Goodness, okay. How did that feel, looking at that number? Uh, it was super insane. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. I fucking didn't feel like I had time to process it. It was like a very overwhelming experience, which I could talk about. But my point is that um, it shifted, like, all of my new fans all of a sudden are 98% of my fan base, mm. right? And because of the nature of blowing up through TikTok, a lot of them are like 17 to 21, right? And uh, like kind of chronically online, maybe even. And not all white, definitely, but like a a good a good bit a good majority so like it's just a different experience so even just off the age factor like i got like a lot of like weird like alt black kid fans which is super awesome that's like my favorite shit <laughs> like if i'm being honest i remember being there and like listening to a lot of artists who are representing that but like who are like 18 19 20 or whatever but even them like they're not gonna like remember like belly or like yeah. uh fucking what's the shit with tupac Juice. I must say, yeah. I mean, like, there's any, any. It's funny because it's like the thing where people are like, oh, it's two Americas. It's funny because, like, I'll, you'll talk to a white person and you'll say something that you think is just like, oh, like, of course they know what this is, but they don't know what you're talking about. You're like, oh, this is just like a black thing. You know what I'm saying? That's happened to me multiple times where I'll just be like, oh, you know about da da da. They'd be like, wait, what's that? And I'm like, oh, never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> you know what's cool though? When you get to be the one to tell somebody instead of them learning it from another white person and then it gets distilled. And that's what happens with language. Black people or que- really queer black people come up with some cool slang and then that leaks into like straight black people and like queer white people and then it distills into like straight white people and then it distills into middle aged people and then it becomes a term you don't want to say at all. Like crash out. <laughs> that I think that term has like that's went through like I felt it went through like five phases in like two months. <laughs> Dude, crazy. Crazy. Or like something that I know a gay person had to come up with was uh the the I forget how they say it but like it's like ate it no crumbs left or whatever. Like no I've seen I've seen many like <laughs> white people trying to be hip say that. And I'm like, that's so interesting. This this came from which I would assume some gay black person, to now it's like thirty this forty seven year old guy trying to sound cool to the youth. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's you know what's really funny though is like when something when culture overlaps in a weird way, but in a weird but genuine way, like uh, like an example, like the easiest example would be like let's say like a white or an east asian person who grew up really in the hood mm-hmm. like super in the hood and then they're super hood in a really genuine way that almost will make like other white people uncomfortable and confused and black people like, i feel like black people can tell the difference between a white person who's trying to act like that and a white yeah. person where it's like oh this thing really grew up like yeah that, right i feel like that's the easiest example but another example is like i got this on me i hope he's watching it uh he's a really really close friend of mine he's a Asian dude um but like he uh oh, how do I be vague he's he's involved in certain activities he's delivering things you know he's door dashing yeah he's you know you feel me he's door dashing and um but he was dating this like black trans girl who's actually kind of famous uh which is a, this is a whole arc but by nature of him hanging out with her and all of her friends, he just started picking up like the black trans slang, and like he'll just very casually be like in the stew talking about whatever, and he'd be like, "No, it's giving blah 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 blah," <laughs> but like dumb, like casual, and in a way that isn't like forced or weird. It's like very funny, like like shit like that, or like uh, he'd be like, "No, that poor," like something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn, you was really with them, 
with them good people. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. He just listened to one of your songs. He's like, damn, bro, you ate. No crumbs left on the table. <laughs> Dude, literally. It's funny. That's it's funny. funny. And I, I love that. And, and, and you know, back to the first thing we were talking about, it's like, I feel like in my, I, I, I love that kind of stuff. And I feel like I'm like, on some level a representation of that so i like doing that in my songs right like that's what gays and thugs is all about like i'm really good with the gays and the thugs like this is real canon like you come to detroit you just like you just, like this is this is facts you know what i'm saying um yeah not so. not as quite as opposite but gays and thugs reminds me of a future bar where he said um he got the ku klux klan and the streets with him and I just, I just thought that was insane. <laughs> he got both of those people with him in the streets. <laughs> he did say that shit. Isn't yeah. that old? I, I, that, that, yeah, that's, that's, that's quite a bit ago. It's funny because, like, I think he outdid you. I think he, he somehow got even more yeah, polar that's opposite. <laughs> that's that's funny insane. Well. Shout out to Future. Um, that's Future. But, uh, but no, I, I, I appreciate you coming through, man. Um, Good, uh, yeah. If, if there's any last words you have for the people watching. Uh, the floor is yours. Oh man, go get you some fucking money. Uh, you know what? Actually, go get you some help. Cause a lot of you niggas need help, myself included. I got me some help. It changed my whole life. There's lots of therapies. You try a therapy if that there. If you got health care, you got no excuse. If you try a therapy, if that therapy doesn't work, try another therapy. There's like a million different kinds of therapy. I go to ERP therapy for OCD. I have obsessive compulsive disorder. Go get you some addiction help. I go to a, an addiction recovery program. If you're drinking too much, if you're smoking too much, if you're shooting up, if you're fucking too much, if you're a codependent, they got. There's all sorts of ways to get help, and you got to be the best version of yourself in this fucked up, evil society because this shit is gonna keep weighing down on us because the government is trying to fucking kill us. Not so to go put your mind right. Not to make light of one of those things you said, but it is crazy. People really out here be like having sex too much. Like they're addicted to sex. Like the, the I, nymphos are. I here. know. That's what I go to. Really? Yeah. No, I'm a I'm a I'm a twelve step recovering sex addict. I'm on step nine. I've been doing it for two plus years. I was living crazy. I was living super. I was living super crazy. You'll hear, bro. It, it, you'll hear it like in some songs, but it's like I think by nature of being a rapper and part of rap culture is to boast about sex and sometimes i'm just boasting about sex because i'm a rapper and it's fun yeah. right um but i got like several lines throughout the album where i'm talking about being a sex addict and i think people are just like oh this means he fuck a lot but i'm like no for real i so if i have my wallet i show you all my chip i'm like a real real uh real real recovering sex addict. i was getting the, that's remember what i was saying like an hour ago about what they them pussy was doing to me clinically yeah Bro, clinically, nigga. I mean, clini clinically, diagnosably. Crazy. That's go get y'all. Go get you some help, man. There's lots of help out there. Hey, for 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 everybody watching. I mean, of course, I gotta co-sign that. I mean, I, I I never said this to you, but you know, like I'm a. I'm a, um, it feels like I'm finna say, like, I'm addicted or something. That's not where I'm going with this. It's not like I was finna say, all right, guys. Let's, but no, I'm a, I'm in school for counseling. So, oh, really? that's some, that's some, I'm in a master's program, program for counseling right now. Good so, for you, bro. Uh, that's right. definitely learning about literally all of that and like different types of therapies that work, addiction therapy or whatever. So, I got, I got to take an addiction class next semester. So, uh, learning all about that type of stuff. So, for uh, a class, they make y'all get addicted to something. That would be interesting. You know what I'm saying? That would be absolutely insane. We they got a bunch it. of shit laid out in there. <laughs> That's insane. I mean, just the you can have drugs there. I'm just imagining stuff you can have on the table. You can have drugs. You have food. Have a woman <laughs> just naked. You know what I'm saying? You have they got, just like they got, sex. On the table. They got squares. They got pack of six. They, That's they got, insane. They got on there, man. Dude, I was actually listening to. I know. I know. We we run a little long, but but, but no, you're you, good. You know Theo Vaughn? Yeah. Okay, so Theo Vaughn just had this um this doctor psychiatrist writer. Who was like really incredible, very smart name, uh, Gabor Mate, um, on there talking about um, addiction and trauma um, and like both in the macro in the sense of like where we're at as a country, but also how it like works in the brain. Very good, uh, very interesting. And oh, he was talking about his own experience with addiction. He had like a shopping addiction mm. and he like 
like somehow like trained his brain to be addicted to buying CDs specifically, but like to the point where he's talking about like he at one point he could spend several thousand dollars in a day just buying CDs, and he like missed the birth of like one of his children to like go buy CDs like something like insane like that. And it's just like, yeah, like the way your brain, like I've learned a lot about this through like my recovery and reading and therapy and stuff, but like the way your brain is wired, like the, your, your shit will really, like if you are getting dopamine from something, your really? brain can't get addicted to it. Yeah. Porn, bro, a lot of niggas, a lot of niggas need to get free from that porn addiction. The, the, they got meetings for that. They got books for that. You can break free as possible. I'm, I'm the, I'm your cheerleader in the corner. Think of Rob Apollo. Hey man. Bro, happen at you the real advocate man I, I i do think like nigga imagine imagine 10 years like later in the future after you miss your son birth after like buying a c imagine like you miss your son birth to buy like a, a album of a nigga who fell off you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> like, i gotta suck <laughs> Girl, you miss your son birth for a troy Ave album Oh, your son, your son should, like, I get it, you're addicted and all, I'm not forgiving you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not forgiving you. You say, Dad, did you get some hard shit? I got Trey F. <laughs> no, I got that, I got that 2026 9. <laughs> oh, man, a, a, a freaking ignoring your son's birth for a gumbo release party or something? I mean, that's just, come on, dog. That's, crazy, that's a real man. question. That's, hey, if y'all are still here, drop a comment. What's the funniest album you could be buying? Uh, while you're missing the birth of your child, I'm trying to think of one. If I can, no, nah, that's Is actually this one forgivable, huh? Like you think there's a forgivable one? Like I was going to buy Blind limited release. You know what I'm saying? It's like, or even nah. I was, I, I went. You, even though you couldn't buy this in stores, but like I want to go buy Endless. That's even more like yeah. niche. You know, I was like, oh, they okay, say, okay respect that. <laughs> but like, if you was like, um, salute to bro. He seemed like a good man. <laughs> But, like, if somebody said, hey, bro, I was, I was trying to buy that Mike G solo album, and it's like, all right, bro, you know what I'm saying? Salute to that brother, though, man. He's feeling like a good brother, man. <laughs> bro, you know what's crazy about Mike G? It's funny you say this because I said it before. Hey, shout, like, shout out to Mike G. But I wonder how it feels because it feels like out of everybody who is in Odd Future, like, they hit a crazy success rate like 10 years later, right? I've really almost like 15 since they really came out, yeah. like or 13 or 14. But like, bro, obviously you got Tyler, you got Frank, you got Earl, you got the internet. Taco is a successful DJ. Haji Beats is with Gwen Stefani? No, nah, he's with, um, oh, um, Nelly Furtado. Nelly Furtado. And what's his name is on the bear and just got nominated or, or, or got like nominated for some acting, like, <laughs> Actor. <laughs> Nigga naming all this successful shit for Haji. He has a girlfriend. <laughs> that was crazy, bro. That was crazy. But it's Nelly Furtado. That's crazy. You didn't even get the name right first, bro. You said another person, dog. That was crazy. Hey, you pull a you pull a bad enough bitch. You can add that on your accomplishments. That that, that is a fact. That is a fact. Um, but no, yes, all those people. And then what's Mike G and Left Brain doing? So you know what's funny? Left Brain is so talented. I don't know what, cause like I I want to like interview, bro, because like some of those beats he used to give to Haji when they were mellow hype back in the day. I was a huge Odd mm-hmm. Future fan. Those beats were nuts. Like like he's yeah. crazy. I really wish he would. I don't. I mean, he probably is doing stuff. I just wish he was more in the spotlight because there's no way he's lost yeah. the talent. That guy is wonder, fire. Yeah, I don't know what. I have no idea. What, even Domo Genesis has had like a yeah. pretty successful like yeah. solo career. I, I always thought that nigga was weak. <laughs> I you did, watching Domo Genesis? I always thought your ass was weak. I thought he was weak until I heard him on Rusty, and I was like, Oh, this nigga. Oh, his first on Rusty is hard. You know. Um, but no, I know what Mike G's doing. Mike G's a battle rapper. Stop playing. I'm dead ass serious. Mike G battle rap. If you, t- if you, I've never seen him battle rap because I just can't imagine his. Because you know he's kind of cool and he talks yeah. like this. I can't imagine that in a battle rap format. Bro, you so put me in a it. battle rap with Mike G. He never coming back up. Bro, one funny thing about me is like everybody like. Okay, I think it's probably good that rap is like very friendly now, or whatever. I'm very competitive, mm. bro. I got like lists of uh, uh, niggas in my head where I'm like 
bro, it's, it's one thing in particular where I'm like, bro, and I know it's going to happen for me. It's not super unattainable. Attainable. It's probably like a year to 18 months out. I say, I get on a song with this nigga, it's probably guessable too. And, but it's like, people will like kind of compare my music to his a lot. And I feel like people will be gassing his bars up a lot. And I'm like, I get on a song with this nigga, I'm going to embarrass this nigga. I'm going to make him look like a, a, a nigga who wrote his first rap bird. <laughs> Like, I'm really competitive like that, bro. Like, I, I used to be an athlete. Like, lot, lots of my life was around competition, not even in a healthy way. No, I was about to say, you know what I do. Like, when I go around, people don't even rap. Like, I have a bar for everybody. Everybody. Like, it, like if a nigga got a flippable name, like his just real name is flippable, I'm like, I wish this nigga rap so I could flip his name. And, like, yeah, I got a bar for, you know what I'm saying? Literally anybody I've ever came in contact with, my mom, I got a bar for us. She wants to start it up. You know what I'm saying? I got a bar for everybody. So, Dude, the same way that you say that, I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. You're ready for the battle at any moment as far. Any moment. Any. So, if a nigga pull out something, I'm going to. I say it, you know what I'm saying. I'm ready at all times, man. Do you know? Uh, do you know my favorite color, the rapper? No. He be having these like viral videos. His music is like pretty. It's like it's like similar to mine in that like it's fun, but it's also like hard. He's barred up. He's like a tall, skinny, dark skin dude with dreads that wears glasses. He's a LA nigga. He had that fuck Dan Schneider video. Oh, okay, okay. Where he's okay, like okay. outside yes, the yes. Nickelodeon place. Yes, yes. Anyway, yes. he's a rapper, but he also is going viral just like. He had like a viral song where he had a beef with a bald nigga, so he made like a shut up bald nigga. No, like, I yes, yes, nigga. I know who this is. Yes, yes. Yeah, bro, that nigga is a real hater. That's my homie. He was in my crib like teaching me the game of like hating and like being ready to drop a diss on a nigga at any time. And he was like, he's about like he bumped into this like uh, this like famous rapper from like the like like 2010 era, and he was like, bro, why when I took a picture with this nigga the whole time I was thinking all this shit that like I could drop in a diss song about him. Dude. Like he's a real hater, bro. He had me thinking like, bro, especially when I be getting compared to these like white meme rappers, I'd be like, bro. Should I just start beefing with the white rappers? Like only only white meme rapper, like at first, and just third shot at third shot at Ian. Just go for it, man. It's too easy. Almost. I guess Tyler like, already did it. So niggas know. already hating on Ian. Yeah. I gotta. I, I'm a. I'm gonna find somebody. <laughs> Let's find a nigga that's not even like offensible. Just just ruin his day. Just, <laughs> just say the meanest thing you can about him. Dude, that's so funny. Oh, I'm ready to go. I'm TTG. Hey Shout man, out. as you should. Uh, Shout out. For for everybody watching, I appreciate you guys. Uh, this is a very good interview. I appreciate you. Until next time, All everybody. Right. I say what I mean. I mean what I say. Haters gonna hate. Players gonna play. in y'all holler at your boy.